G'day, welcome back to the channel now. This is a video about the Race Day Quads Challenge to the FAA's Remote ID Bill. And a court hearing that was that occurred just last week, I think it was, the DC Circuit Appeals Court for the United States heard the verbal presentations from the Race Day Quads lawyer, Jonathan Ruprick, and the FAA's lawyer, whose name I don't remember and don't care. Um, so these two lawyers presented their case to a panel of judges and the judges were surprisingly well informed they'd done a lot of homework i was really impressed with the caliber of the judges on this case um, they asked some really really good questions questions that i wouldn't have expected them to ask and to be honest i think they did as much for the um, for the RDQ team, as the RDQ team themselves did, it was really it's really worth listening to. I put a, I put a link to this whole um, recording in the description of this video. Go and have a listen to it. It's worth listening to from beginning to end, and you'll find that the judges really lay into the FAA um, lawyer and ask him questions he cannot answer or chooses not to answer. And in fact, at one stage, they just have to throw him a bone because he's so out of his depth. They, they had, the judge had to tell him what he would like to hear him do in terms of responding, <laughs> just, he, he, like training on the job, I suppose. But yeah, it was it was a pretty poor performance from the FAA lawyer. Now, a lot of people have looked at this court session, analysed it and said, well, it sounds pretty good. Well, there may be a a win here because the judges really did side with RDQ over the issues of privacy and constitutional protections and things like that. You know, they basically the judges said, well, why shouldn't someone who's got a huge ranch be able to fly their own drone on that property below the tree line without having to broadcast that information with remote ID? Why can't they do that? The FAA's response was pretty weak and anemic. And uh, the FAA basically said, oh, but if we have to change the rule, we'll have to go right back to the beginning. But there was one part of this whole um, court session where the FAA showed their ACE card. They still have an ACE up their sleeve. And I don't think people have appreciated exactly what this is yet. I know that Joshua Bardwell did a really good analysis of this with Loretta, I forget her name, and, and is it Bunty? Um, they had a look at this uh, recording and they weighed in with their thoughts and the views, but they didn't spot this. And maybe, I mean, I have to say right up front, I'm not a lawyer, don't want to be a lawyer, never been a lawyer, don't even play one on the internet. I just look at things from a common sense and logical point of view, which is sometimes not well aligned with the law. The law has so many little foibles and you know, nooks and crannies that what appears obvious to lay people often is completely different in law. So I'm not saying that what I've spotted here is a major thing. I just would like to hear your opinion on this. Does this sound like maybe we overlooked this? So what I'm going to play you is a little bit uh, the, the important part where the FAA pulls the ACE out of its sleeve. And to understand what's going on here, you have to realize that the FAA didn't just wake up one morning and decide, oh, let's do remote ID for drones. No, they were directed to do this by Congress. And the Re Reauthorization Act, I think it was, Congress directed the FAA to introduce remote ID effectively. So this is coming from further up the food chain. This is coming from politicians who have their own agendas to pursue, and the FAA is simply doing their bidding. That the FAA has been told, do this, so that's what they're doing. And so you've got to look, why are the politicians doing this? And if this court thing fails, where do we, you know, if the, if the FAA lose this case, where do they go? Well, here is the clue. Let's just listen to this. Listen very carefully. It's not a search. Um, and if you disagree on all of those scores, uh, we do have the position that or suggest the court um, deny the petition on the basis that their their special needs apply here, such that right now there's no way for um, FAA or its security partners to identify drones in the air. There we go. Did you spot it? The FAA or its secu or security partners. There's no way without remote ID for the FAA or security partners to identify the drones that are out there. And he said, if basically, if all else fails, this is what we're going to say. It's a special need. It was a special need so that we can ensure national security. Security. And you might think, oh, no, but to be honest, I've done my research and national security is the one thing that trumps your constitutional rights in the USA. If the government says this is essential for national security, the constitutional protections go out the window. You don't believe me? Let's take a look at this. This is a really good paper. I've linked to this in the description. You can go and read it yourself. It's titled National Security. Let's go down here. Basically, here's the key takeaway. 
The Supreme Court has examined where the government can restrict free speech to further national security. Now, let's be clear, free speech, that's the First Amendment, but that is the cornerstone of, co of the Constitution. It's the cornerstone of a free and democratic society. It is the, the most important part of the Constitution is the right, the protection of free speech. So if you're going to annex that right in the name of national security, then the Fourth Amendment, which is far less important, that can be thrown out more, far more easily. But what they've said is, Periodically, the Supreme Court has examined whether the government can restrict speech to further the compelling interests of national security. In doing so, the court has recognised that national security as a governmental interest does justify restrictions on First Amendment rights. There you go. The courts have decided that we can throw out your constitutional protection in the name of of national security. And the man from the FAA just said, this is a special need. If you don't agree with our case, then it's a special need. And we and our security partners won't be able to do our job unless we have remote ID to identify the drones that are out there. So that's where they're going to go. Now, if if the uh, RDQ prevail in this court case, if the court rules for RDQ and says, I'm sorry, but this remote ID bill is unconstitutional, the FAA, I'm, pretty, I'm picking the FAA, will go straight to the Supreme Court and file an appeal and use this as an example. Say, this is essential for national security. We need this. There are precedents, uh, numerous precedents in the past where national security has enabled uh, rules to be passed which set aside constitutional protections. Now, no one else spotted what this guy said. Or at least they glossed over what he said in this, uh, in this court case. The attorney for the FAA made it very clear. This is a special case, special needs, and there are security partners involved. And this is coming down from Congress. So you can bet this will get the backing of Congress. Very difficult situation for the hobby because I think this is the ace card up the sleeve of the FAA, and I'm pretty sure they will play it. If they lose this case, they will play that card. And we're right back to base one. We're right back where we started. I don't know. The only response then is to a file an appeal for the appeal if that's at all possible and who's got the money to do that i don't think the hobby has so there you go tell me what you think have i read too much into this am i am i sort of you know just um out of touch tell me I, i'm not an american i'm I, I don't know too much about the constitution i just did some research and i listened carefully to what the attorney said now as i say go and listen to this whole damn thing if you want i'll do more analysis of what went on in this particular court session because it's fascinating absolutely fascinating for example what the FAA didn't say was just as important as what they said. And it paints a kind of dystopian picture of where we're all headed in this thing. And it's not good. If you want me to, I'll do a video pointing out why I think the FAA are not telling us the truth about remote ID and where it's headed. They are not. And I think, again, it's all hidden in what the FAA attorney said. I was to say what he didn't say. He didn't say something very important. Anyway, thanks for watching. Short video makes a change. Just go down to the description, read the, or go to the links in there, including uh, Joshua Bardwell's an analysis of this court session if you haven't read it or haven't listened to it or watched it, uh, and also um, the actual full session itself. And leave me a comment. I want to know, am I way out of touch here or am I maybe onto something? Who knows? Only time will probably tell. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I appreciate everyone watching the videos and your support through Patreon. Makes it all worthwhile. Bye for now. If you disagree on all of those scores, uh, we do have the position that, uh, or suggest the court um, deny the petition on the basis that there, there are special needs apply here, such that right now there's no way for um, FAA or its security partners to identify drones in the air. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!